Today we are going to show you the Shea Center's concept of a ride-along. We've used tape to illustrate the movement points of the horse's pelvis and of the rider's spine and pelvis. This will give you a visual, visual representation of what happens when the horse's pelvis is walking. So now we're going to watch the rider and the horse walk away from us. As the horse and rider are walking, notice first the rider's pelvis as it moves three-dimensionally forward and back, a little rotation, and a little side to side. Also compare that with the horse's pelvis. It's also moving front and back, side to side, and a little rotation. Next we're going to mount the rider so you can compare the movement as the rider sits astride the horse. Are we filming the mount? Yeah, we're doing this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we have the rider mounted astride the horse. Let your eyes look at the movement. Notice how her pelvis swings side to side, a little front and back, and has rotation. Now compare the same movement to the horse's pelvis. There's no piece of therapy equipment that can mimic the same three-dimensional movement. This three-dimensional movement is the same movement shown when the rider is walking on the ground. So essentially, as the rider sits on the horse, she's getting the same three-dimensional movement as a person walking on the ground. Now we're going to show you some different movements that we do in a hippotherapy session and how we utilize the movement to strengthen the rider's uh, muscles and balance reactions. First of all, we're going to halt the horse. As we stop the horse, her back muscles have to kick in, and now we're going to walk on, and her stomach muscles kick in. The simple nature of a transition helps her to stabilize her core. Let's try that again. As we halt the horse, her back muscles kick in, and we're going to walk on. As we walk on, her stomach muscles have to kick in. So that she doesn't lose her balance up there, her body automatically performs riding reactions and keeps her in, the center of, in her center of balance. Next, we're going to perform a circle. So the horse is going to walk in a circle. We're going to look at it from behind. As we're looking at the rider from behind as she circles, the left side of her trunk muscles shorten and the right side of her trunk muscles lengthen. So as a therapist, we can use this information. If I have to work on someone's trunk muscles and stretch the right side, I might send them into a left circle. And if we can change direction, we're going to do a circle to the right, like a figure eight. So turn left and then we're going to turn right. So we're going to turn to the right, circle to the right. As the trunk muscles on the right shorten, conversely, the trunk muscles on the left lengthen. So again, as a therapist, we'll use this information to make a difference in our riders. And now we're going to halt and we're going to turn the rider sideways. So why don't you face the um, outside of the arena, Trish. And then we'll move the camera to the inside so that we can see the weight shift. As the rider's sitting sideways, this is a position that we usually use for children, not necessarily adults, but this will give you a visual representation of what's happening at her pelvis. And we're going to walk on, and the horse is going to continue walking. As we walk sideways, her pelvis gets a lot more lateral weight shift, right and left, right and left, and her upper trunk has to stabilize in a forward and backwards motion. They're going to circle right around us. As they circle around us, Gravity is going to take her to the outside of the circle, so her back muscles have to kick in to stabilize her so she doesn't fall off the horse. So finish the circle. Conversely, if we did a circle the other way, you can imagine her stomach muscles would have to kick in. And then we're going to halt here, and we're going to turn Trish backwards. As Trish is turning backwards, backwards, just imagine the amount of motor control and motor planning that she has to do to turn into that position. Notice the alignment of the tape on her thigh. Just the fact of sitting backwards has put her pelvis in more of an anterior tilt. So her pelvis is more upright than it was when she was sitting forward. As she's backwards, I've also given her a wider base of support back there with the ho horse. Um, Trish, can you just show, point to the horse's pelvis back there and how wide it is. As she presses down on the horse, she can get some weight bearing through her wrists, her elbows, and her shoulders, which, are all, which will all increase her proprioceptive information of her joints. So first of all, we're going to have you sit up, Trish, as we walk. And sitting backwards, we're going to demonstrate a couple things as we go. So let's have the horse walk on. 
As we walk, and she's sitting backwards, obviously she's moving through space backwards, so her back muscles are going to have to kick in. She's also getting a lot of sensory input that's um, different for her vestibular system. She can't see where she's going visually, so she has to figure out where her body is in space and able to balance herself in a backwards direction. Go ahead, Trish, and put your hands on the croup of the horse. As she weight bears down through her wrists, again, we can increase the proprioceptive input through her wrists, her elbows, her shoulders. We can increase the uh, co-contraction of her shoulder blades and her neck muscles and strengthen her um, head and neck control. As she goes onto her elbows, a little bit lower position, the horse really swings her body. She gets a lot more vestibular input. This is a position we might use if somebody is a sensory seeker and needs a lot of sensory input. Obviously, the closer she gets to the horse, the more she's going to swing. And you can go ahead and sit up, Trish. Also, as a therapist, we might use this position if somebody has really low tone. This position actually can stabilize them because they have a wider base of support to balance on backwards. We might even incorporate games up here. We might play with a ball. Um, we might play puzzles or any sort of activity that we can encourage on top of the horse to make it fun, but at the same time getting the therapeutic value of the trunk control, the balance reactions, and the strengthening. And we're going to go ahead and halt here. And let's turn all the way around to the front so we can take a last view at how the horse's pelvis mimics that of the human person walking. Okay, and let's walk on. So just lastly in review, just visualize and look at how the horse's pelvis mirrors exactly that of the rider. So when the rider sits astride the horse, they're getting the same three-dimensional input that they are when they're walking on the ground. Imagine if a child has a disability and they never walked. This input will allow them to, to use their core trunk muscles and balance reactions to practice walking over and over repetitiously in a 30-minute session. It also allows them to get stronger in their trunk control just by the simple nature of doing simple transitions. And the biggest thing that is very beneficial is the psychological impact. Imagine if you're a child in a wheelchair and you're always looking up at people. Now you're sitting astride the horse and you actually get to look down at people. It's very empowering. So not only is it fun, it's therapeutic, and you know many of the kids feel like they're just out here to have a good time while we're really working them and making a difference in their functional outcomes. Thank you.